Oh, stop it. Stop it. The chance. Enough. Welcome to Talk Wrestling here on No DQ. Whoa! <laughs> we got props, people. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, look out. It's birthday day. Oh, my God. <laughs> Give me the sign. Look out. The prop, the prop master is in effect over here. You got to thank the prop master for that one. She's going to get it later. That's okay. She's cooking me dinner. So, what are you going to do? Anyway, welcome to Talk Wrestling here on the NoDQ.com YouTube channel, and of course, NoDQ.com. Yes, it is my birthday, and for the occasion, I decided to be totally goofy and throw on a birthday hat. Oh, yes. Dorky though it may be. There we go. Birthday hat in effect. Before we get to your questions, because there were plenty of questions and comments, of course, happy birthday comments from all of you on, in, the, in the Twitterverse. I want to throw it to something that Aaron posts every year. He actually already posted before I got a chance to record Talk Wrestling this morning. But I want I want to have it on my own terms and make sure you guys see it on this show as well as his own posting on the YouTube channel. Let's take you back in time. Believe it or not, I th let me think when this was. 12 years ago, if you can believe that. 12 years ago, on my birthday, March 1st, 2005, we were in... Sunny, somewhat cloudy, if you will, Ventura, California for a Rue show. Shout out to Jenna and Scene and Echo and Ped and Rick and Irma, everybody involved with Rue, uh, the Rue crew, of course. Um, and we were out there for a, for a Rue show, and we decided to tape uh, a mailbag show for XMV out there in Ventura, and this happened to yours truly. Take a look. Mm. All right, let's come over here. Mmm, chocolate. Mm. I, I thought she didn't like chocolate. Mm. It's good. Happy birthday, Jeff. Oh, what are you doing? You son of a bitch. The toy, you see, toy room. Doesn't see, that look so good, though? This is, look, Doesn't this, it look good? This is happy both. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Man, you bitch on your shirt. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Just like Jeff's shower at home. Uh, so the, the next, my my glass eye. Glass eye. All right, Cammy. Uh, hey, he, he was cool. Yeah. There you go. Aaron posts that clip every single year on my birthday. We wanted to get an updated clip when he was in California for Raw back on the 20th of February, but uh, it didn't happen, so we're stuck with that for another year at least. Hopefully when he comes out next year, we'll get a birthday cake and we'll update the shot because... You know, it is, as we say on NoDQ.com, it is what it is. Anyway, that's the birthday clip. Let's get to your questions and comments on Twitter. Let's go right into it. Let me scroll down a little bit here to see where it starts. Dun, 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 dun. I'm scrolling down. See where it starts, because there's a lot. I, I appreciate that. You, I appreciate the support, you guys. You guys are awesome. I think it was after Raw, so there's that. There's February 20th. Anyway, um, thank you also for as I'm scrolling through this for the support on the um, on the DDP Yoga. It's been kicking my butt, no question about that. But I love it. I, it's and it's so funny. I found myself at Denny's this morning for my birthday, and I found myself realizing that I could not go against the grain, if you will, against the plan that Dallas has laid out entirely. Because I'm not really eating the DDP diet right now. I'm slowly building toward that. I'm trying to... It's a complete lifestyle change for sure. No question about that. But it's all a matter of... Um, it's all a matter of, shall we say, choices. And I went to Denny's this morning, and rather than get the usual free Grand Slam, if you will... Uh, I chose to get, if those of you didn't see the post on uh, social media, I got egg whites and I got um, uh, turkey bacon, which is healthier, chicken sausage, which is healthier, sausage, which is healthier, and uh, light margarine instead of butter on the, uh, on the English muffin. So choices, kids. It's all about choices. Let's see. Let, let, let me first address something that got posted and... Uh, uh, it has to be addressed because Lord knows it was so asinine and so like, why would people believe this? But we, we addressed it on the fast lane prediction show. Somebody said TJ at Trent underscore swag 316 back on the 26th of February sent me this, a picture of this, of this, uh, run sheet, if you will. And, uh, it, it's it's been going around for the last couple of weeks. You've all seen it, I'm sure, with the USA title thing and some names misspelled and everything. Um, 
that's the perfect example of don't believe everything you read on the internet because it's hot garbage. It just it's crap. It's huge, steaming, triceratops size crap. And don't believe anything about WrestleMania until April second at eleven or twelve Eastern. There you go. That's when you know it's legit and it's lit, kids. There you go. Um, the first question today comes from, let's see, um, we'll go with Doom Reverb, at Doom underscore Reverb. Does the Cruiserweight division not have any intrigue like it did 20 years ago, or is Dead Baby incapable of booking them as stars? Um, I think it's a little of both. Um, you know, Eric Bischoff talks about this on his podcast almost every week, about the fact that the WWE has kind of gotten under the cruiserweight, so to speak, trying to push them as much as Bischoff did in WCW, if you can believe this, 20 years ago, 21 years ago now, when the cruiserweight division really took off in 1996 with the addition of Rey Mysterio and guys like Dean Malenko and uh, Eddie Guerrero and Ultimo Dragon and people like that. Um, but I don't think that WWE really understands cruiserweights. Like, they don't, they don't get that we just want to see him wrestle. We don't want to see any dumb old, you know, Neville being angry and grumpy and King of Cruiser Race. I'm better than you. And no, these guys are pure wrestlers, and we want to see them wrestle. So, and again, the intrigue that was there 20 years ago. The thing is, a lot of the stuff they're doing on the toned down version of the Cruiserweight Classic on Raw and on 205 Live, we've seen already. It, 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 there's no newness to it. So people are kind of like, meh. All right. Um, Mike, at PunkFan123, if you can induct one person in WWE Hall of Fame, alive or deceased, who would it be and why that superstar? Of people that aren't in now, um, this is not going to surprise any of you whatsoever, are the... No question about it. And I'm throwing it out there now. If it's at the WrestleMania weekend that's going to be in California when they have the new stadium built, I am available, Mr. Van Dam, to induct you. I will do that. And I will write a hell of a speech. I already got one up here, kind of on here a little bit on the computer, kind of half, like a half draft. But I will promise you, if I get to induct the whole freaking show, it'll be the whole freaking induction. Kevin Owens Shell at Broken. I love his Twitter handle and I love his uh, at Twitter at. They're both awesome. The Kevin Owens Shell at Broken Vinny Mac. Yo Jeff just watched the first Talk Wrestling, which by the way was July sixteenth, I believe, uh, two thousand seven. So we're coming up on ten years. If you can believe that, guys. Uh, you said WWE should put Chris Benoit in the WWE Hall of Fame. Do you still feel that they should ten years later? Um. That's an interesting question, and I appreciate you guys asking me that. Um, Mr. Mac, if you will, Kevin Owens show. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, one would think that their stance still stands, that you know he did what he did, regardless of his mental state at the time, regardless of his physical condition at the time, he committed a, the, the most heinous of crimes. He committed murder of his own family and of himself. He committed, he killed himself. Um, do I believe it now? In 2017, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Damn, put me on the spot. I keep my I don't read these before I go on the air. I just write to you guys. No, I don't. And that's me backtracking ten years later, but. At the time, it was a knee-jerk reaction. It was like, er, I'm pissed off at Nancy Reyes and everybody else, and it was just a kind of a kind of a thing. It was just really, you know, just a knee-jerk type reaction. So, pardon my hands. I'm trying to make sure I look straight, which I don't. Um, yeah, no, probably not, and it probably won't ever happen. Let's see. Jason Simone at Simone One has broken Matt, lost its power now. It seems like it's become like every other gimmick now and not that special, but rather boring. Um yeah, I would have to agree. Um I, I keep in mind, I do not watch TNA. I I have not watched TNA full time in a long time, but the fact that T 
TNA didn't offer the Hardys a contract until roughly five days before it was supposed to be renewed shows you how little they valued the Hardys at the end. Um, I think we as fans value the Hardys and their contributions, especially Matt. He, Matt's a freaking genius. My goodness. But um, will they be allowed to carry the broken gimmick into places like Ring of Honor and New Japan if they go there, and of course WWE if they're brought back to WWE? Um, also, but while I'm on that, the gift of Salter at Drink It In Man underscores between each word. Uh, with the Hardys contract expiring and WWE resigns them, can you see them using the broken gimmick? If so, however, will it get with the general WWE audience? Keep up the good work. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't. The broken thing would work, but the problem that I've been hearing is um, from a lot of people is that uh, they don't. The people out there that tweet me and ask me. Um, don't seem to think that uh, the broken thing would be as impactful as uh, as uh, it, is, it has been in TNA. Um, so I don't know if the broken thing would work, but um, if they do bring the full-on broken gimmick to WWE and they let those Hardys be turned loose on the WWE universe, then maybe we all be deleted. For fear. Be awesome. Let's see. Andrew David Dugan at Andrew Dugan62. If you could change anything in the wrestling business, what would you change? No. Well, I would bring Chris Ben Wyatt Girl back from beyond. I would reduce Raw to two hours. No question about that. Because having sat through it, plus a pre-show with Rock and two matches, plus the post-show with Rock. Granted, that's not part of WWE's plan, but it was there. It's a very long afternoon. We were there. My brother, my son, and I were downtown for almost 10 hours. So it was a long day. So... With Raw, three hours is a very long show, especially watching on TV when you're watching it live and you can't fast forward necessarily. So I always DVR both Raw and SmackDown because it's easy to fast forward. So I reduce Raw to two hours. I would move 205 Live to before SmackDown on Tuesday afternoons. So I have Smack, uh, 205 Live be at 4 Pacific, 7 Eastern, and then SmackDown be at 5 and 8. Um, that would be my goal. Those are my, my changes. Um, a guy who is trying to get me in trouble, the Outcast Kid, has uh, mentioned my name as far as other podcasts and invading. Um, I'm not down for taking anybody's job, but I will make a guest appearance, so keep that in mind. But he wants to know, do you think Ty Dillinger can win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, or does he debut on the SmackDown after, after WrestleMania? Um, it'd be cool to see him debut in the Memorial Battle Royal. He already kind of debuted in the Royal Rumble match so it would be cool to see him do that um, do that uh, do that kind of gimmick in uh, not a gimmick do that uh, another appearance in the Battle Royal and maybe even win this one and make a huge name for himself on the main WWE roster it'd be pretty cool so hopefully we will see Ty Dillinger the perfect 10 um, 10 in the 10 near future Matt Big at Matt Big one two three. Happy birthday, Jeff! Thank you. What do you think of how Emma is doing? Um, I am so disappointed in my fellow March first birthday girl. By the way, happy birthday to Emma, Biggie, Scotty Anton, Scott Riggs, Booker T, General Adnan, if you can believe that, and former Extreme Mayhem guest and friend of the show. The professor, the original professor, on the West Coast professor, the original professor, Iron Mike today. Happy birthday, guys. Godspeed. Love y'all. But Emma's thing right now with not wrestling, and she's probably so rehabbing is my guess, but why I haven't put her in the ring yet. Um, people lose interest fast. Very fast. Including me. And I love Emma. I always have. Um, but I'm kind of like, let's just make it happen already. It's been three years since the NXT arrival, and I'm waiting for her to come into her own. And it's not happening, and it sucks. 
Deontay Rose de at DSmove210 asks, do Nakamura and Bobby Roode both get called up to the SmackDown roster, or will they get split up on the draft before WrestleMania? I think the draft is after WrestleMania, if I'm not mistaken, so before WrestleMania wouldn't be a situation for the draft. As far as splitting them up, I, calling them up, first of all, Bobby Roode needs to keep the NXT Championship glorious! for a long time to come, so don't call him up just yet. Let him rebrand and rebuild the NXT Championship into what it can be. As far as Shinsuke Nakamura, the call-up is happening. It's a matter of when, not if. No question about that. Um, so for me, I think that uh, we need to have him on probably SmackDown and not Raw, and he'll be a great addition to the SmackDown roster. How about him against AJ? How about him against Cena? How about him against uh, The Miz? How about him against Dolph Ziggler? Him against any of those guys on the SmackDown roster? Awesome. All right. From Scotty C at Chip Fat Skit with two Ts. With Shaq versus Big Show possibly not happening at WrestleMania, would the show versus Strowman match from last week's Raw, which we were at live, have been better off for WrestleMania. I understand that they probably aren't one hundred percent sure on what's happening, but if they did do, but if they did, do you think they missed out on something for Braun? Um, yeah, they could have really put Strowman in a spot against a high profile athlete. Yeah, Big Show's not high profile anymore, so as far as where he is on the roster, but he's still the world's largest the world's largest athlete. He's still one of the all time greats. And I think a WrestleMania match like it was on it was a really decent match between him and him and uh, Strowman on Raw that we saw live. So I think that uh, it'd be cool to see them on the show of shows. But what the hell was Shaq? That was weird. What happened with Shaq? I couldn't believe that. It was very interesting. Um, David Anderson at X David Anderson one Hey, Jeff, how's things? It's my birthday. It's a great day. Get it done. Um, just a quick question. Do you think Undertaker will interfere with the Roman reigns Strowman match at Fastlane? We talked about Fastlane on No DQ's uh, channel along with uh, David Panay and Rich, of course. And I didn't bring Undertaker up. Um, interesting theory, David. Um, could be. Although, it kind of defeats Undertaker's purpose of being a indomitable character. Why would he purposely um, interfere with a match that really isn't his business? Yeah, Roman eliminated from the Rumble, and that's fine. But for me, I don't see a need for Undertaker to stoop to that kind of level. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Jace! You know, I saw her walk in and bend over and pick up the damn balloons. I still didn't expect that to see. Chaos around here. Complete chaos. Anyway. Don't, I mean, don't surprise me if you see the Undertaker. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if you see him, but it'd be a surprise as well. It's kind of a tit-for-tat thing. Um, let's see. This is from William at X Part Time God. Isn't Steph just burying talent verbally, getting old to you? It's every show she belittles a new person and she doesn't wrestle, so the superstars never get their heat back. I understand it's her character, but shouldn't the talent be able to somehow get their payback? Um, well, Steph's getting his. Um, as far as Foley with him being berated, they're trying to write him off of TV and for the hip surgery and must be bringing Kurt Angle, which would be awesome. Um, so don't be surprised if that's why they're kind of belittling Foley and bra breaking him down slowly but surely until after WrestleMania, and then he's gone because that's what they're doing with him. So, as far as the rest of the characters getting payback, um, Stephanie gets a wrestle, she can still go, mother of three, but she's in great shape. You never know what'll happen. Let's see, uh, dun, 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 dun. there we go. No, that's not the question. There we go. There it is. Callum Owen at Callum Owen 98. Do you see Maria Kitnellis and Mike Bennett joining NXT, or do you think Maria's previous issues with the Bellas will stop her from re-signing? That's the story of uh, uh, Monday night, or Sunday night, whatever it was. Um, Mike and Maria are gone from Impact Wrestling. They are now free agents, and... Would not surprise me if they show up in WWE or NXT. Um, yeah, Maria's had issues with the Bellas and other and the other women in the past, but you know what? Time heals almost all wounds, and I think that Maria's grown up. I think the girls have grown up a lot in the last how many years she's been gone, and Maria's school schooling was sponsored by WWE, so I think there's a little bit of an exchange there. And as far as Bennett, the guy is unbelievably talented. He would fit in very well in NXT or WWE for that matter. So I think that if we do see them, it'll be a tremendous, uh, it'll be a tremendous addition to the WWE family. Let's see, dun, dun, dun. Aaron's post with the cake. I think that's it. Um, that is it. All right.
Thank you guys for watching this week here on NoDQ.com and, of course, NoDQCW on YouTube. Um, at underscore Dovmeacham, Twitter and Instagram. Um, for my DDP diaries, which will be this Friday starting out, the first official long one, uh, first full week of DDP yoga in, uh, you can check out at JD Meacham on YouTube. And uh, don't forget to watch No DQ and A V with Aaron Rift and uh, and uh, Power of Pain with David Payne. Quick picks with Greg Cherry is up this week for the Fastlane predictions. You can check our Fastlane predictions as well on NoDQ.com. And for everybody at NoDQ and everybody here in the crazy Meacham house, we will see you guys next time.